minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Welcome to the Sacred Division. And now, here is your host, Bishop James Long. Well, all right, everybody. Welcome to the Sacred Division. It is a, at least in Kentucky, it's kind of a a, a dreary a dreary Monday. It's overcast, cloudy. It's uh, you know, it's kind of a spitting rain. That's what I call it. You know that rain that just like, oh, just stop for a second, just stop. But it's it's one of those uh, it's one of those days here in Kentucky. But nonetheless, I I tell you what, <laughs> today has been crazy, and I mean really crazy. I just got back from the doctor, so I rushed. I mean, they, they, of course, there's so many people that were sick. There's a lot of people, guys, I'm telling you, there is a lot of people out there with the, um, the flu. Uh, it is, it is insane. It, it, it's just like, my gosh. And I did, all they had to do is take some blood work, but there were so many people there who were just sick and man, I thought, gosh, that just, so we, we don't know. I, I got to tell you, it was, um, we don't know if if this is close to the end of the flu season. If it if it has it hit its peak, uh, some people are saying yes. Some people are saying nope. We have a lot more to go, so I don't know. But you know, I got to tell you something, and and this really is true here. But I don't understand what is going on with this crazy, crazy weather. Now, I, I know people are going to say, "Well, Bishop Long, it's not global warming," and I, I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what you want to call it. I really don't. If you want to call it global warming, fine. If you want to call it climate change, fine. All I know is this: it is February the tenth, two thousand and twenty, today, and in Kentucky, February is supposed to be freezing cold. It's supposed to be way down to the single digits. I mean, we're talking, when I was a kid, and I know here we go, when I was your age, when when I was a kid, seriously, February was a brutal, a brutally cold month. And and, and that happened really all the way throughout, even through high school. February was always very, very cold. I remember even high school and and having a car, and I remember, oh man, it's so cold out there, I don't know if my car's going to start. To, you know, go to school, I might have to take the bus. Literally, I'm telling you, if February was rough. Now, we have 60 degree weather in February. 60 degrees. Not only that, but now get this. In Kentucky, in February, we have tornadoes. I Don't tell me that the climate isn't changing. Because that's the most absurd. When someone says it's not, all you got to do is look outside. And when you see tornadoes in February in Kentucky, it doesn't take a genius, a meteorologist, a scientist. It doesn't take anyone with advanced knowledge and, and skills in meteorology to know that something is happening. And I can tell you, that so far, I got to honestly, we have had very little, very little snow this winter, very little. And so as, as a matter of fact, I, I think we had a dusting or maybe it might have been an inch or so, maybe, but by the afternoon it was gone because it had warmed up so much. 
I just don't get, I really don't get it. This is this the craziest thing in the world. So who knows? Who knows why? I'm not, I, I, I'm not a scientist. All I can say is when I was a kid, this month was very, very, very brutally, and I mean brutally cold and snowy. Now we get tornadoes here in February in Kentucky. It's It's not normal. And no one can tell me that it is. So I, I don't know what this cycle is. I don't know. I, I Again, I'm not arguing for or against climate change. I'm just simply saying something is clearly wrong. When you have uh, Wilma's brother, as a matter of fact, uh, I think five years ago, four years ago, in February, I think it was February 28th, actually. It was in February. But he had a level three tornado. Level level three. It destroyed his house. Completely destroyed his house. And, and before, you know, this uh, tornado situation, before, he, he, he never really was afraid of storms. And now he's terrified. So when there are even a possible, a tornado watch, he, he's, he's at home. I mean, he's, he used to be out and, go you know if he went shopping or go out to eat he really didn't care now it is terrified him and but when you have february and then you have tornadoes in february uh uh-uh. uh no 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 now if you're down south if you're in florida or maybe the southern you know regions i, I don't know may, i don't know what february is like for you maybe you're used to tornadoes in february we're not in kentucky not in no no tornadoes happen in april through september that's really when it happens here that's when it's supposed to happen in kentucky it's not supposed to ever happen in january or february and january we had weather we had 65 degree weather i want you to listen 65 actually one day we had 70 degrees so it was a record breaker, of course. But just think about that. January in Kentucky, we had 70 degree weather in January. And then people want us to believe that that's normal. No, 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 it's not. Uh, and I really don't care what anyone says. Uh, I, I'm living in Kentucky. I've lived here all my life, except for when I went to the seminary. So I know what the weather does. I know what the normal weather pattern is for every January, for every February, and things have changed. It just doesn't make sense. Um, yesterday was the great, big, huge Oscar uh, night, uh, Oscar win. And I uh, thought, good grief. You know, I, I just, is it me or or... Sometimes do the Oscars just kind of irritate you, uh, like like it does sort of me. I mean, you have these people who they want to sit there and lecture, and 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 I'm thinking, you know, what you, you you live a very very sheltered life, and most of your life has been sheltered, and you're going to lecture us about cl- climate change, and yet you're jet setting in your in your you know twenty million dollar jet. Okay, that that makes a lot of sense. But now Joaquin Phoenix yesterday and and I and I even said I saw the movie The Joker and I even said it after I watched it. I said it on Facebook, he probably will win the Oscar for this. Because really he does a an amazing job. Uh, absolutely as a Joker, it goes really deep into the world of psychological illnesses and how this country has failed miserably with helping people who who have psychological illnesses. I mean, really, this country has failed miserably. And so I I think this, this movie really talks and shows the downward spiral of someone who really does have a serious mental illness and how, unfortunately, uh, the the care gets cut, and even he can't even get its medicines. So, but Joaquin, when he received his award, and you might have seen this yesterday, but he rails against uh, uh, cancel uh, against um, culture cow insemination 
in a wild Oscar acceptance uh, speech for Oscars. It really is. And this is from the D- Daily Beast. And he says, for weeks, uh, Joaquin Phoenix has been a favorite to take home Best Actor at the 2020 Oscars. And sure enough, he collected the statue at the Dolby Theater on Sunday night. But leading up to uh, Phoenix's big victory, his first win in the category, many rightfully wondered what Phoenix might say. At the Golden Globes, at which I saw, it was a mess. That speech was a mess. I mean, he was all over the place. But um, he won the Golden Globe in January. After all, Phoenix created a viral moment when he called out his fellow actors for taking private jets. That was just one way of many impassioned moments on his Oscar campaign trail. Sure enough, the Joker actor delivered the speech of a lifetime on Sunday night. A meandering, really, address that managed to touch on human selfishness, artificial bovine insemination, yeah, that's cow, and the actor's late brother, River Phoenix. So he says, quote, I think the greatest gift that acting has given me and many of us in this room is the opportunity to use our voice for the voiceless. Okay, so far so good. Phoenix said as he collected the trophy. All right, we're good now. I've been, he says, I've been thinking a lot about some of these distressing issues that we are facing collectively. And I think sometimes we feel or are made to feel that we champion different causes. But for me, I see commonality. I think whether we're talking about gender or equality or racism or queer rights or indigenous rights or animal rights, we're talking about the fight against injustice. All right. So far, I like this. We're, We're doing good. So Phoenix continued, we're talking about the fight against the belief that one people, one race, one gender, one species has the right to dominate, control, use, and exploit another with impunity. Absolutely. Bravo. I mean, really, I, I think we, we, yes. That deserves a round of applause. Absolutely. That deserves a round of applause. 100%. I think that was perfect. Again, we're talking about the fight against the belief that one people, one race, one gender, one species has the right to dominate, control, use, and exploit another with impunity. Perfect. So Phoenix added that he believes we've become more disconnected from the natural world. Now, this is where it starts getting like, uh huh? And that humanity has become egocentric about our place in the universe. Then things got really strange. He says, we go into the natural world and plunder... It's plundered of its resources. Yes, we agree with that. I I think that makes sense. Phoenix said, we feel entitled to artificially inseminate a cow and then steal her baby, even though her cries of anguish are unmistakable. Okay. Oh, okay. So I, I understand the point of dominating nature and trying to tie it in with inseminating, artificially inseminating cows and then steal. Okay. It has been proven that the mothers of, you know, of animals, the, the, the animal, they feel very protective of their babies. Okay. But then he says, still Phoenix said, humanity can be so inventive and creative and genius. And I think when we use love and compassion as our uh, guiding practice principles, we can develop and implement systems of change that are beneficial to all uh, sentient beings and to the environment says, now I've been a scoundrel in, in my life. I've been selfish. I've been cruel at times, hard to work with and ungrateful. But so many of you have given me a second chance. And I think that's when we're at our best, when we support each other and not when we cancel each other out because of our past mistakes. But when we guide each other to grow for redemption, that is the best of humanity. Absolutely. Absolutely there. And before he left the stage, uh, Phoenix closed things out by quoting a lyric Uh, His late brother, River Phoenix, once quoted, run to the rescue with love and peace will follow. Well, okay. I I don't really know kind of what to think about this because I understand what he's saying about the artificial insemination of a cow and how it's unnatural and how in in his belief we are uh, overpowering nature, dominating nature. We are doing unnatural acts such as artificial insemination of a cow and then taking its calf and then taking its milk, that the, the, the milk that is needed for the calf. 
but it just really got off. I, I think it was lost in translation. I really do because if he had just left that part out, I think it would have been a, a really fantastic speech. But the problem is he, he then began talking about a cow and taking its milk and, and its mama crying. And, all, and, it's, and I was like, dude, just, you know, just think everybody and appreciates, you know, you, you getting an Oscar and, and, and um, just kind of telling us, hey, look, let's look out for each other and, and, and then go, go off stage. His really seriously, his his acceptance speech um, at the other awards, the Golden Globes was just like what? I mean, he really just went off and on a tangent, like he he had lost control of his thought. But apparently, this is him. That's his quirky attitude that a lot of people talk about. I don't know. I think it probably could have been a bit better of a speech. I think if he just <laughs> left the cow out, <laughs> you know, just kind of. Just, you know, I think he was, a lot of people are, are talking about that. And unfortunately, a lot of people are making fun of that. But, you know, it, it is, he, he did kind of step in it. Um, to talk about, I tell you what, this coronavirus, it is, I just don't know about this thing. I, I really, I don't know about this. I don't know. It, it makes me very, very uncomfortable. It truly does. It makes me very uncomfortable because there is just, there's so much, there's so much there that, and it just seems like more and more people are getting uh, sick. 40,000 coronavirus cases may be the tip of the iceberg as death tolls near a thousand. This is from USA Today. The death uh, death toll from the coronavirus sweeping across China and surging around the globe closed in on 1,000 on Monday, amid warnings that the 40,000 known cases, the known cases, may be just the tip of the iceberg. Chinese health officials said 97 more deaths were reported Sunday, a spike after days of decline that put the global toll at 910. All but two of the deaths have occurred on the Chinese mainland, most in and around the city of Wuhan. Total reported cases rose to 40,645, more than 40,000 of them in China. The director of the World Health Organization warned that these numbers may not tell the entire story. Said there have been some concerning instances of spread from people with no travel history to China. The detection of a small number of cases may indicate more widespread transmission in other countries. In short, we may only be seeing the tip of the iceberg. I tell you what, I, and the question really in, in the article says that the new coronavirus could become a pandemic. So, so the question is, what is that? Should I be worried? The number of infections in the USA remain at 12 on Monday in the United States. So it's here, folks. No deaths have been reported, although one American died in Wuhan last week. Dennis Carroll, director of the U.S. Agency for International Development, Global Health Security and Development Unit, said sharing information is key to combat combating the virus. We know this. Uh, Dennis says outbreaks involving novel viruses generate a lot of misinformation, particularly in early stages when there is a mad scramble to get information. Be wary of initial reports and rely, really rely on the guidance from experts at WHO. Uh, at the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Experts in separating out fact from fiction. It's interesting because, remember, it wasn't that long ago that China was blaming the United States. Remember when I talked about this, uh, that they were blaming the United States for blowing up this coronavirus. They say, we're just making it a bigger deal than what it really is. That's what they said. Remember, remember that article that I talked about. But get this. In the DailyMail.com, a coronavirus mass arrest. You've heard me correct. 86 people die a virus in a day in China as Beijing starts rounding up. Suffers, and, and the video actually show hazmat suit clad goons dragging people from their homes while death hit 724 so there so here it is this is what's amazing to me so china is now blaming the united states saying the united states is just blowing this way out of proportion and yet china 
is now going around to homes of people who are ex- who are expected to be sick or even suspect even suspected to be sick and they're going to these people's homes and they are rounding them up which okay i understand you you don't want it spread but it seems a little crazy to me a clip believed to be taken in uh, Qingging uh, Garden Wuhan shows a man sprinting away from a group of officials some officials appear to be carrying large metal sticks as they run after him along nearly d- uh, deserted streets on Saturday officials confirmed 722 cor- um uh, coronavirus deaths in mainland China, bringing worldwide total to 724. Also re, uh, revealed five more Britons, including a child, have virus in France after one of them went to Singapore. Another clip said to be taken in Suzhou shows suspected cor- coronavirus sufferers dragged from their homes. Officials in protective suits and face masks are seen walking two of the people out while holding their arms. A third man then resists by kicking out, and it takes three officials to pick him up and forcefully remove him. Yeah, and, and then China has the nerve, the audacity to say that we're, we're, we're the ones blowing this out of proportion. And China is, they're, they're taking officials going into homes of people who, who may just have the flu, we don't know, or just maybe a, a cold. But we, we just we are seeing these videos of people being drugged violently out of their home and then separated from their families. I don't know. I just um, I saw the video and it really is troubling. It's very, very troubling to me. And yet and yet they, they have the audacity to try to blame this on us, saying that we are just we're just being way too rude and 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 just um shameful shameful but nonetheless i don't know what i don't know what you think but i think that's a problem and of course i have to talk about some politics because we have a lot to talk about in politics today especially biden guys i don't know about you okay if you are a biden supporter that's great if you're not that's great too we all have our personal choices. But did you see this this video that came out today? And this is from Grabby News. And this is all everywhere. You can see this anywhere on the news. But apparently, Biden calls out a skeptical New Hampshire voter. Now, get this. He calls out in, in a public forum. He calls her out. A New Hampshire voter. He says that she is a lying Dog-faced pony soldier. I I think this race is getting to him. I think the fact that he is losing and losing handle. I mean, we're not talking about just you know really a little bit behind. He's losing pretty pretty in big numbers. I mean, he took a massive massive loss in Iowa. He wasn't even close. Not even close. And to be honest, he was the front runner when all this start and Biden announced, yes, he's running. You know, many people within the media thought, well, he's the front runner. He's obviously got to get it. He's the nominee. It's done. It's sealed. It's signed. It's delivered. Well, and we're not seeing that at all. Actually, we're seeing just the opposite. His numbers are completely dropping. And now he's trailing in New Hampshire. So. And for him to call, say this, listen to this, listen to this. So the dust came up after the voter asked whether he can rebound from Iowa. So perhaps the pressure is getting to him. So according to Grabby News, it says on Mon- on Sunday, Joe Biden snapped at a voter in New Hampshire calling her a lying dog face pony soldier. Okay. The dust came up um, after the voter asked Biden, how do you explain the performance in Iowa and why should the voters believe that you can win a national election. Look, that's a fair question. That's a very fair and honest question. You got obliterated in Iowa, Joe. I mean, and, and he did. And he's the vice president, former vice president of the United States. And he's been in politics, what, since he was 20s, 26, 24, or whatever it was. I mean, it's like, dude, you've been in politics all your life and you're getting destroyed. I mean, the polls, the polls are just destroying you so that's a that's a fair question and the question again how do you explain the performance in iowa 
And why should the voters believe that you can win a national election? You know, if I was asked that question, I would say, look, you know, the fact is, is maybe I just did not resonate well with the, with the voters in Iowa and, and they, and Bernie obviously, and, and Mayor Pete had a stronger, uh, stronger following there and they should be congratulated. They did a great job. They fought a great campaign and I look forward to beating them on the trail uh, in the next States. I mean, that's a common response. I'm not in politics, but that's what, how you would say that. You, you, you don't want to bash a New Hampshire voter just because they ask you an honest question. And so he replied, you ever been to a caucus? Biden replied. After the voter said she indeed had attended a caucus, Biden shot back. No, you haven't. You're a lying dog face pony soldier. Okay, first of all, what? <laughs> Dude, pony soldier? What is it? Is that an insult in 1920s or 1930s? What what the hell was that? I mean, I guess he's calling, I guess he's basically saying that she's a plant from a, 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 another person's, uh, I guess another a politician, maybe one of the other candidates. I don't know. Maybe she was, maybe she was a plant. I guess that's what he's trying to say to her. But that's a fair question. Even if she is a plant from another candidate, it's still a very fair and honest question. And he should be he should be expected. He should expect these type of questions because they're fair and they're just and they're just they're completely justified. So in, in, instead, he just called her a lying, dog-faced pony soldier. He says, you got to be honest, he continued. I'm going to be honest with you. It was a little bit confusing in Iowa, but let's assume it was all exactly right. Biden told the 21-year-old voter, Madison Moore, that Iowa has a poor record of picking presidential winners. The comments were first flagged by Yahoo News' John Ward. Biden was speaking at the first two of two, two Sunday campaign events in Hampton, New Hampshire. Um the latest polling from the Boston Globe, Suffolk University, is tracking Biden in fourth place. Only one point ahead of Senator Amy Klobuchar. My gosh. Dude, you're in fourth place and you're the former vice president of the United States of America, the vice president of a very popular president, Barack Obama, and the Democrat Party, and you're in fourth place? No, 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 no. Vice President Biden, you seem like a nice man, and I'm, not that you're probably going to ever hear this, hear this uh, show, but dude, you don't need to be attacking a 21 year old voter simply because she asked you a question, a fair question about you know you got your you got yourself beat up there in Iowa, and so how in the world can you possibly convince people that you can win a national election? Yeah. Because I've seen you, at the, I've seen him at the debates. Okay, I, I watched all the debates, the Democratic debates. I watched all of them, and I have to tell you, um, he is he fumbles over everything, everything, and he's just it's it's just not there. It's you know that it factor. You know that Barack Obama had a, what they they used to call gravitas, and he he had it. He had that it factor. But I'm sorry, Joe Biden just does not. He just doesn't. I think, and and again, this is my opinion, but I think Joe is past his prime. And I think he should be happy and just remain as a senator and and kind of complete his days in that arena because he, he, he is very successful there. He's very successful. People like him apparently on both sides of the aisle, and he gets he gets some things done. So I think his strong points seem to be as a senator. It's not on the campaign trail. That's not where he he just doesn't shine. He he doesn't have it. Mayor Pete. A lot of people compare to Mayor Pete to Barack Obama. Many people are saying that that Mayor Pete apparently studied uh, Barack Obama's presentation, his speech. Uh, his mannerisms, and he does. I mean, you can you can see that he has clearly uh, ad- adopted many of Barack Obama's nuances when he does his presentation, his speech. It, yes, you can see that he has adopted some of those 
um, those those habits that Barack Obama has during a presentation, a speech, uh, and that's fine. I don't care. Barack Obama's a great. He's a great orator. He's he he's a you know he's he he presents speeches very well. And a lot of people like the way Barack Obama pre, you know presents uh, uh, presentations or or rallies. I mean, people like him, and that's that's, that's nothing wrong with that. But Joe Biden, dude, you're in fourth place in New Hampshire. Fourth place. What's 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 really scary is he is behind uh, Bernie Sanders, who calls himself, and it's true, a Democrat socialist, and very proud of it. Now, whether or not you like socialists or not, the fact of the matter is, is Bernie Sanders is proud to call himself a socialist, and Biden is just way below, way below Bernie Sanders. I don't know, man. I just think you you got to you got to stop attacking uh, voters and just kind of just kind of accept the fact that maybe perhaps your time, as far as the national uh, scene, maybe it kind of has expired, and uh, and that's okay. It's not saying you're bad, or it's not saying it. Just simply say maybe it's it's time to consider retirement. So anyway, don't go anywhere, my friends. We're going to be right back. We have a lot, and I mean a lot to cover. And uh, I think we're going to have some conversations about some sharks. And I don't like great white sharks. Scary. We'll be right back. The Sacred Division is proudly sponsored by the United States Old Catholic Church, an all-inclusive Catholic sacramental faith community. For more information, check us out on the web at www.usocc.org. The United States Old Catholic Church, focusing on diversity. Have you ever had the desire to join a progressive Benedictine community? A community that welcomes everyone, regardless of gender, marital status, or sexual orientation? Have you always felt a deep calling from God to live as a Benedictine, but doors are slammed on you because you do not fit the right profile? If you have experienced these unnecessary roadblocks, then I invite you to take some time and visit CatholicBenedictines.com. We are a Benedictine community that welcomes everyone and we embrace diversity. We have valid apostolic succession, and we are committed to living the life of a Benedictine. You have prayed diligently about your calling, and now God is answering. Email us today at catholicbenedictines at gmail.com, and let's begin your journey together. Bishop Long, as seen on Ghost Adventures, the History Channel, National Geographic Channel, and many more, is proud to announce his online demonology course. Students can take the course at their own pace, and it's 100% online. Bishop Long is the exorcist for the United States Old Catholic Church. He holds a doctorate of ministry, master's of education, master's of divinity, and a master's of business administration. Sign up today by going to www.demonologyclass.com. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Sacred Division. I would really, absolutely want to show my appreciation to all of you folks out there who are listening, listening live, and those of you who are listening to the podcast 
um, a little later. I appreciate you very, very much. Uh, I'm going to be doing something special for my shows on Friday. And on the shows on Friday, we're going to be doing giveaways. Now, I'm not going to go into what we're going to be doing yet. So just hang tight. Uh, it won't be this Friday because this Friday uh, I have Willie Windwalker Gibson on. And he's just a fantastic. He's a psychic. He's a shaman. Uh, I really I, I like Willie. He's a friend of mine. I consider him a wonderful man. And we're going to be talking about a whole lot of things of his experience. So please, whatever you do, make sure you tune in this Friday, this Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here. Now, you can listen to us live on Spreaker.com forward slash Bishop James Long. And that's where you can find us. Or you can uh, listen to uh, the live show by going to Facebook.com forward slash Bishop J Long. So either way, you can listen to us uh on those uh, formats. A lot of people like to go to Spreaker because then you can chat and, and type and go in the chat room. But again, it's Spreaker.com forward slash Bishop James Long, L-O-N-G, all one word. So go there, check us out, and make sure you're there this Friday live at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to be making an announcement about what I'm going to be giving away. So we're going to be doing that I'm I'm excited about it. I really am excited about it. And I, I think uh, it's a great way for me to try to give back to the community. It's only going to be on Fridays. The giveaways are only going to be on Fridays. And so, again, this Friday, don't forget, this Friday, um, they're going to have a very special guest on, Willie Windwalker Gibson. And uh, that, again, it's February the 14th, February 14th, Valentine's Day. And that's going to be at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time times but you got to make sure that you listen live or you can listen to the podcast show that's fine too so uh either way if you listen to the podcast show you can still be eligible for the contest because i know that many people are work uh at 4 p.m uh, eastern standard time uh, i teach online english and so i have flexibility in my schedule so i understand a lot of people don't have that but if you're at work at 4 p.m and you can't listen to us live don't worry don't worry just listen to the podcast and uh, i'll explain how the rules are going to be set and the giveaway and uh, again i'm excited about it so make sure this friday willie win walker gibson um i tell you what you know mitt romney you know, he, he, he recently, as you know, voted uh, yes, that, that, that Donald Trump abused his power. And so he voted yes uh, for the removal of Donald Trump to be removed uh, from the office of president. Of course, he's a Republican in Utah. Well, get this. Now, CPAC, the CPAC chair says Romney was uninvited because of, quote, physical safety would be at risk. Now, you, you, this is Associated Press. You, you heard me correctly. When I, okay, so the organizer of the Conservative Political Action Conference, that's what CPAC stands for. Again, Conservative Political Action Conference. He defended his decision to uninvite Senator Mitt Romney saying the Utah Republicans' vote for more witnesses and documents in President Trump's impeachment trial would make him unsafe at the event. He says, this year I'd actually be afraid for his physical safety. People are so mad at him. American conservative union chairman Matt Sklap says in an interview Saturday on Full Court Press with Greta Van Susteren. The biggest problem we have, he says, with Mitt Romney is not that he's just an individual following his own political course. It's the fact that he's something uh, uh, live continuously to cons- live continuously to conservatives. Slap went on to decry the Romney as disloyal, saying that when he needed a conservative like Donald Trump to endorse him in the Senate primary uh, last time, he wanted him in. But then when he gets the Senate job. He wants to distance himself from Trump. He uses a, a use him, lose him kind of a guy. So Romney used CPAC as a platform to woo the party's base as he sought the Republican nomination in 2012 when he labeled himself a severely conservative governor. Now, here's the deal. Yes, I, if you look at the news, Romney did woo Donald Trump. He did. 
You know, both of them had had some words that were not very nice to one another, and so they had a dinner, and they apparently they must have buried the hatchet, and and so Trump got behind him and supported him, and he won his nomination. Uh, he won the senator race in Utah. Okay, but Romney has then uh, voted, as you know, uh, guilty that uh, of abuse of a power that Donald Trump abused his power. Now, here's the, you know, I truly believe, I truly believe in my heart that Mitt Romney absolutely believed that he was doing the right thing. I, I do. If they, just think about this for a second. Now, before many of you are like, oh, yeah, right. He's a, he's a, no, hold on. Hear me out here. Hear me out. And I'm not for or against Romney. I'm just, I'm just, let me just make this point. The fact is, he knew going against Donald Trump could be, and may very well be, the end of his political career. Because Donald Trump, whether you like him or not, is very, very popular in Utah. His ratings are incredibly high in Utah. So, and of course, Mitt Romney is from Utah. But the question is, is, do you really think that this was a smart political move for Mitt Romney, or do you truly believe that he was that he was guided by his faith to make the decision that he felt was right? Because look, if it was a political decision, all right, if it was a strategic political decision, Mitt Romney would have absolutely voted no, no way. Because then he would have had Donald Trump support again. And, you know, if, if Trump wins the election in 2020, then, of course, there's the next race for the senator and Trump would have supported him and he would have won his seat again. He would have run a re-election. The fact is, this has put a target on Mitt Romney's back, hasn't it? And so it wasn't a political move. It certainly wasn't a strategic, and he even admitted, you know, when when he did his, his his discussion, it wasn't a strategic political move because if it was, as I said, he would have voted no, no way. Donald Trump's not guilty. He would have voted no. Of course, that's just common sense. I believe that Mitt Romney truly was guided by his faith. He took his oath to swear to God that he would listen to the facts and that he would absolutely vote his conscience. And he took that seriously, and he took that literally. You know, it kind of bothered me. Um, I think it was Chris Matthews. Oh, no, it wasn't Chris Matthews. I forgot who it was. It was on Fox, um, and he interviewed uh, Senator Romney, and, and he asked him, he said, well, well didn't you think that it wasn't figuratively, but you know, it was just more of a, you know, it was it wasn't literal, uh, meaning taking the oath. And Romney said, "Yes, it was. Yes, it, it was not. It was not, uh, you know, anything else. But it was a literal swearing to God, swearing to the, the making an oath to God." And he he said, "I took that very very seriously." Uh, the the reporter called it symbolic a symbolic oath that's, that's it wasn't a symbolic oath he he you swore you had to swear you raised your right hand you had to swear to god that you would do the right thing and you would vote your conscience and and you made an oath and romney absolutely i think in my in my opinion i think he voted his conscience because look now he can't even go to cpac because the leader the chair said that he could have physical he could be hurt isn't that crazy? That just, there's a problem. There's a, I understand. I look, 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 look. I understand um, political uh, support and, 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 you know, party support and party affiliation and all this. I get all that. I get all that. But the fact that you could be physically harmed because you voted your conscience. I mean, what in the world? I just that I, I I don't I don't know. You may say that's okay, but to me that that's a problem. That really is a problem. I I I just don't get it. I don't get it. Um, 
hopefully Miss Wilma will be here with me tomorrow. And we'll see. We're going to have a lot of conversations tomorrow. Um, we're, one thing we're going to talk about is apparently there is this uh, tomorrow, uh, the the biblical plague, I mean, of, of bats. But not only that, but now there is, uh, people are calling this a, dib, a biblical plague of locusts that's going to occur very, very soon. And we're going to, we'll talk about that tomorrow. We'll also talk about Iran and what Iran is doing. Yep. They're up to something else. And the sharks, the great white sharks. We didn't get to that today because time just went, flew by so fast, but tomorrow we're going to talk about the great white sharks. And of course, well, there's several things that we're going to have a great conversation about, but I, I ask that you please tell your friends and your family and share this uh, podcast with all your friends and family, if you would tell them to go to Spreaker.com forward slash Bishop James Long and make sure that you listen. Uh, I, I really do appreciate that. Also, I want to let everyone know that I will be changing the, um, well, I'll, I'll probably keep paranormal course, but uh, I'll be updating bishopjameslong.com, the website. So I am fixing that up and updating that. So just kind of uh, be aware of that. If you want to learn about demonology, and angelology and paranormal studies and genealogy, I ask that you please consider going to paranormalcourse.com, paranormalcourse.com, and uh, sign up today because I teach demonology, angelology, genealogy, paranormal studies. It's 100% online. You learn at your own pace, and that's the good thing about it. And there's several different programs that you can sign up for. 100% of the profits uh, goes to funding my homeless ministry. So I go to homeless camps and pass out food and clothes, and I help them. And I also help single moms. We just helped out a single mom just the other day who got out of abusive relationship. She couldn't afford her electric. And so she did apply for government assistance, but it takes a couple months to get her help. So in the meantime, we were able to pull some money together and pay for her electric and some food. So I'm really grateful for the folks who helped donate it. Remember, you know, sometimes in, in life, we all need a helping hand, not a handout, but a helping hand. And that's okay. That's it's, life is tough. Life isn't easy. It seems like there's bills after bills after bills after bills. Now, tomorrow, I do have a doctor's appointment in Louisville. I am hoping, I am hoping that I can get back here by 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, if I cannot, I still will have the show, but it will be at 5 o'clock. So we'll we'll see, but I'm hoping that I'll be back here at 4 um, because there's so much that I definitely want to talk to everybody. Otherwise, it'll be a 5 o'clock show uh, tomorrow live. Either way, try to be here at 4, and I will let everybody know on Facebook. Again, you can follow me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Bishop J. Long, L-O-N-G. Make sure you like that page. Follow me there on that public page, and uh, I would really appreciate that. My friends, remember, people do not care how much you know until they know how much you care. God bless. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you tomorrow in just a few hours away. All right, bye-bye. The Sacred Division is proudly sponsored by the United States Old Catholic Church, an all-inclusive Catholic sacramental faith community. For more information, check us out on the web at www.usocc.org. The United States Old Catholic Church, focusing on diversity.